At a very young, young age as a black man in America, you get to learn about death and homicide and suicide and how it impacts not just you individually, but your community and the rest of the country. And it was these experiences that led me to being an educator in the first place. And I served in that role as an educator with pride and passion and dignity and tried my best to do everything I could to uplift the lives of every child that I taught and every child that I served. And to do everything I could to make sure families had what they needed and that they understood and leveraged the power of their voices. Unfortunately, as we all know, we live in a country where despite our financial wealth, we have tens of millions of children still living in poverty. And as an educator working for the Department of Education for 20 years, I've seen the impact of poverty on the lives of our kids each and every day. And poverty is not a result of children and families who don't work hard. Our children and families work as hard as anyone else. Poverty is by political design and is rooted in a system that has been fractured and corrupt and rotten from its core from the inception of America, especially over the last several decades. So poverty and the impact of poverty on our children and dealing with issues of institutional racism and sexism and classism and xenophobia and everything that keeps the majority of us oppressed is what we designed this campaign to fight against. So tonight as we celebrate, we don't just celebrate me as an individual, we celebrate this movement, a movement designed to push back against a system that's literally killing us. It's killing black and brown bodies disproportionately, but it's killing all of us. It's killing us mentally, psychologically, and spiritually. It's forcing us to live in a country and in a world where so many people are hopeless and have lost faith, not just in the political system, but in each other. But our movement is designed to restore that faith to restore that hope, to bring back the belief in what is possible, to root our values in everything we do, values of humanity, equality, and justice, values that will center us fighting for those who are disenfranchised, for children with special needs, for our seniors, for women, for people of color, to rebuild an infrastructure as we go forward and a democracy that works for everyone. Let me tell you something right now. Elliot Engel, and I'll say his name once, used to say that he was a thorn in the side of Donald Trump. But you know what Donald Trump is more afraid of than anyone, anything else? Black. A black man with power. Whoa. That is what Donald Trump is afraid of. Whoa. So if the results continue to bear out, as they are bearing out this evening, and we get to Congress, it will be our job to hold Donald Trump accountable yeah. and to hold every elected official accountable that continues to be beholden to corporate interests, that continues to be beholden to the wealthy, and is not fighting for the poor, and is not fighting for the working class in our country. Because America, if we are truly powerful, we should use that power to create peace all over the world, to become a humanitarian leader on this planet, and to make sure we have housing and jobs and fully funded schools and infrastructure and health care that's exemplary and humane immigration reform and, hu and a humane restorative justice system that reinvests in communities that have been historically neglected. This is that moment. This is that moment for all of us. And the results show that this district is demanding change. This is what this district has been waiting for. This is what this country has been waiting for. And we are all here now together. So I am excited. I am happy. I am fired up. I cannot wait to get to Congress and cause problems for the people in there who have been maintaining a status quo that is literally killing our children. And the last thing I want to say is this, just to prove how rotten our system is. During this coronavirus pandemic, while over 110,000 people have died, 
Jeff Bezos and other billionaires have increased their wealth by tens of billions of dollars. If that doesn't capture how rotten our system is, I don't know what does. So let's allow this to be a moment where every single person in this district and every single person in this country feels like they are a part of our democracy, that their voice matters, and they will engage from the presidency to Congress to state house to city house to city council to county positions. We need everyone involved to change our country and change the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I love you all. Now, before I go, I have to thank some organizations that have worked with me, and I'm going to take out my notes because I don't want to forget anyone and have anyone get mad at me. All right. Hold on one second. Big shout out and thank you to the Justice Democrats, the Jewish Votes, the, the Sunrise Movement, the Working Families Party, New York State Nurses Association, Make the Road Action, Community Voices Heard Power, New York Communities for Change, and everybody else that supported this campaign. And I have some individuals. Jamani Williams, public advocate Jamani Williams. Is he here? Is he here? Did, come on, son. Where you at, Jamani? State Senator Alessandra Biaggi, New York City Comptroller Scott Stringer, Congresswoman o Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Zephyr Teachout, Cynthia Nixon, Brad Lander, Gustavo Rivera, Tiffany Caban, Rosa Rivera McCutcheon, Robert Jackson, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Ayanna Presley, Katie Porter, Jessica Ramos, Diane Ravitch, and last but not least, every single volunteer that put their blood sweat and tears into this campaign and into this movement without you we would not be here we made well over a million calls 1.3 million i believe thank you all so much for believing in me believing in us this is just the beginning let's get to work i love you all thank you so much